Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back to our channel once again. And it is my hope and prayer that this video is going to find you guys in good health. Personally, I am fine as you can see. Kisumu is fantastic and maybe you will also let me know where you are watching the video from. The county or the country in case you are out of the republic. And for this particular video, ladies and gentlemen, let me know the name of the county you are and whether you are supporting the finance bill or you are calling for its total rejection. In the comment section, just say, I support the finance bill or I reject the finance bill. Ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you this simple question. What really happened to William Ruto? I'm talking of the William Ruto we used to know, not the current William Ruto. Because William Ruto of today is totally different from William Ruto of yesterday. And as a matter of fact, William Ruto is steering the possibility of becoming the first one-term president in the Republic of Kenya. And there are only two things that can save William Ruto. The first thing that can save William Ruto in 2027 is rigging scheme. William Ruto must come up with an elaborate rigging scheme. A watertight plan with IEBC. Because clearly, if you want to have a watertight rigging scheme, there is no way William Ruto is going to be declared the president of the Republic of Kenya. Because at some point it reaches where now, even if you try to rig, the power of the people will be more than your own power. So William Ruto must figure out how he's going to come up with a very airtight plan with the IBC. That is the only way. The second thing that can help William Ruto is foreign powers. William Ruto is the president of the Republic of Kenya today. Most people believe courtesy of the United States of America. Because of the United States of America. Now, William Ruto is already opening wars with countries like Russia. Russia has what it takes to challenge the America. So if, if Ruto is with America, Russia might say, okay, let me side with this other group. And probably out of that fear is why we are seeing William Ruto's allies accusing outside forces as being behind the GNC's demonstrations. But that is not what I want us to analyze in this video. In this video, I want us to look at an incident that took place earlier today in Nairobi. William Ruto was heckled and humiliated badly in Nairobi. William Ruto was going to GSU headquarters to hand over Kenyan flag to the group of 400 Kenyan police officers who are set to leave the country tonight for Haiti. And while his convoy was headed there, as usual, you know, when the president is passing, as usual, roads will always be cleared, people will try to, to line up. But what happened is that William Ruto was greeted with a heckling, reject finance bill, Sakayo, we are tired. Watch this short clip because this is the only one I've managed to get. Watch it very closely because it's going to form the basis of this analysis. Now, what's your take on that incident? Because previously, the presence of William Samara Ruto alone would attract massive crowd. 
But now, the crowd don't even want to hear anything about him. What is really happening to William Samuel Arafuto? And by the way, tomorrow, the Gen Z's are promising total shutdown in the Republic of Kenya. And I just want us to offer our support, moral support to the young Kenyans. Because it had reached a point where majority of us had thought that the new generation would not bother about the affairs of their country. Kenyans are actually shocked. In fact, as we were going for, you know, I've been analyzing politics here. And one of the questions which most people have been asking me is that the Gen Z's will not even turn up to vote. Based on what we are seeing today, the Gen Z's will be dictating the 2000. And 27 politics. Maybe we need to do a comprehensive analysis about how Gen Z's will easily take control of politics in 2027. But for now, I want us to figure out why William Ruto was I called. Number one, I think the country is furious. The country is bitter and the country is angry and there is and there is rage over the finance bill. So Kenyans want really to hear the voice of William Ruto on this finance bill. If I were Ruto, I would spare some time and probably listen to these people or even issue a statement. What is lacking in my view is William Ruto's voice. What is he saying? What is he planning? Of course, William Ruto has said it repeatedly that for him is going to pass that bill. And that maybe through Oscar Sudi has also added that they'll consider the views of Kenyans in the next finance bill, which means according to Ruto, this finance bill has to pass. But Kenyans are angry and bitter. <laughs> These people don't understand the damage they are doing to the people and the economy. And they are expressing it to the president. So if I were Ruto today, I'll recall that finance bill. Because there is no way William Ruto is going to recover, politically speaking, from this finance bill. Because the current Kenya is not Kenya of yesterday years, where things like this would have just happened and very few people would have known. Maybe reading someone has been taken to committee or something like that. But for this one, the Gen Z's are actually able to sustain this narrative. Number two, I think there is also disappointment. Kenyans are telling William Ruto that they are disappointed with him. You know, William Ruto got the highest percentage of votes from the mountain. And if you listened to the voices there, majority of them are actually the Kikuyus. So they are disappointed. And that's why the Kikuyu nation are actually out in their large numbers to protest. They want, they are angry and they want to show William Ruto that for us we are disappointed. We are not happy at all. Number three, it is also clear 
and probably a foregone conclusion that William Ruto's popularity is actually taking downward trajectory and very fast. This is a man whose presence alone, for example, if William Ruto was just going there, people would be waiting for him, hearing, not crying the way they are, not unsubscribing from his official handles. So it means that William Ruto's popularity is actually coming down and is coming down very fast. And lastly, you know, from uh, that heckling, you can easily conclude something. That William Ruto is clearly out of touch. There is that disconnect between William Ruto and the voters. For example, William Ruto attended that uh, event at GSU at headquarters. And the event was about flag flagging off the 400 Kenyans who are going to Haiti. So Kenyans are wondering, those people are wondering, why would the president take all his time to listen to or to plan how to release Kenyans to Haiti? While there are problems here, it means he doesn't care. It means there is that disconnect. And that's why this is the moment for someone to actually emerge, especially within the space. And lastly, this is a warning. Gen Z's are giving Kenyans what to expect. I don't know what to think. That's my take. Until next time, this is Lee McQueen. Bye-bye.